Hello there everyone and welcome back to the Mr. Sin channel. Today we are reviewing the last topic review video of Unit 4 of AP Psychology, Social and Cognitive Factors in Learning. Now remember, this is not the last Unit 4 video. There's still the Unit 4 summary video which covers everything you need to know about this unit. Now it's no secret that throughout our lives we are continuously learning. However, we can see there are different factors that can impact the learning. Factors such as genetic predispositions, adaptive responses, and neural mirroring are all biological influences on our learning. Our previous experiences experiences, generalizations, expectations, and associations are psychological influences on our learning. And our culture, motivations, family, friends, and peer groups are social cultural influences on our learning. And these are just a couple examples for each of these different categories. We can see that our learning results from our environmental, biological, and cognitive influences. Sometimes things help individuals with their survival, such as preparedness, which is a biological predisposition to learn associations between things that help with survival. An example of this would be taste aversion, a concept we previously talked about on this channel. This is when we eat food that makes us sick, we associate that with the food, and we're less likely to eat that food again. We can also see the power of biological instinct in conditioned animals as well. It's been observed that animals who have learned reinforced behaviors will often revert back to certain biological patterns that they're predisposed to. This is known as instinctive drift. This was studied by Keller and Marion Brellen when they attempted to condition a raccoon to drop a coin into a bucket. At first, the raccoon could drop the coin into the bucket, but as the experiment went on, the raccoon had a hard time simply dropping the coin. They wanted to clean the coin, and they went back to their biological habit. If we look at the work of Robert Rescorla and also Alan Wagner, we can see the importance of cognition and learning. Rescorla and Wagner showed the world that animals can be taught to expect the outcome of an event. To do this, they had two groups of rats. One was given a conditioned stimulus, a tone, and an unconditioned stimulus, a shock, at the same time. The second group was given a conditioned stimulus, which was a tone, and an unconditioned stimulus, which was a shock, but not always at the same time. The result was that the conditioning occurred for the first group, but not the second group, and the tone for the first group resulted in a response of fear from the rats, while the tone for the second group did not result in a response of fear. We can see here that the more reliable and predictable the association is between the conditioned stimulus and the unconditioned stimulus, the more association will occur. We can also see the impact of cognitive process when looking at Edward Tolman's rat study. We talked about this study in our 4.1 video briefly, but now we're gonna go more in depth. The study looked at rats in mazes. It had three groups. Group one received no food reward, group two received a food reward at the end of the maze, and group three received no reward in the first 10 trials. But the 11th trial onward, they received a reward. When observing the rats, researchers noticed that the rats started to develop a cognitive map. This is a mental layout of the environment. Researchers also noticed latent learning, which is learning that happens but is not noticeable until there is a reason to demonstrate it. For example, researchers noticed that when food was provided with the reward at the end of the maze, the rats had more motivation to quickly finish the maze. In this example, we can see that the rats had an extrinsic motivation, which was the food. They started to have less errors and they wanted to finish the maze more quickly. Remember, extrinsic motivation is when an individual is motivated to perform a behavior because of an external reward or to avoid an external punishment. Intrinsic motivation is when an individual has a desire to do something for their own own sake, but there is no external punishment or reward. If we connect back to classical and operant conditioning, two concepts we talked about in our last two videos, we can see that biological influences such as an individual's natural predisposition can restrict which stimuli and response can be associated together with classical conditioning. If a behavior is too unnatural for an animal, they may not be able to learn it. There are also other ways in which we learn that we have already talked about on this channel as well, such as social learning, which occurs when watching others interacting with them or mimicking them. Or observational learning, also known as vicarious learning, which is when we learn information or skills from watching others receive different forms of reinforcements or punishments, and we expect a similar outcome if we do the same action. Now, sometimes when we are trying to learn something, it can become stressful, and this can cause some people to give up, and others to utilize different strategies to cope with this new stress. This could occur because people believe the external locus of control is too great, or their own internal locus of control is non-existent. External locus of control are different outside factors that impact us and could determine our fate or outcome. These are factors that we could not control and are out of our hands. For example, how individuals at school treat you or the amount of money your family has. While internal locus of control is how we control and impact our own fate. For example, if we have a test coming up, we can study hard and make sure we're ready and prepared for it. If individuals feel like things are outside their control, 
they may develop learned helplessness. Remember, we talked about learned helplessness previously on this channel. This is when an individual feels powerless in a situation and ends up giving up. This can occur if an individual feels like they have no control in the outcome of an event or situation. Individuals may be in a stressful situation, but still have a feeling of personal control. They may utilize problem-focused coping strategies or emotion-focused coping strategies to remove themselves from the stressful situation. Problem-focused coping is when individuals try to eliminate or reduce stress by directly changing or altering the stressor, changing how they interact with the stressor itself. While emotion-focused coping is when individuals try to eliminate or reduce stress by ignoring or avoiding the stressor and focusing on their own individual emotional needs that connect to the stressor and how it makes them feel or react. Sometimes individuals will rely on biofeedback, which utilizes cognitive factors to help change or influence an individual psychological factors of stress. This helps people change the way their bodies function by making them more aware of different sensations. For example, a person who has a lot of stress can get biofeedback therapy, where the individual would wear a heart rate monitor and other electronic devices that can monitor different aspects of the body. The person can then learn how to deal and cope with the stress. The individual will be put in different stressful situations and will get immediate feedback on what the body is experiencing, and then can work on strategies to reduce the stress, such as breathing strategies or coping methods to help reduce the biological impact from the stress. And just like that, we are done with another unit of AP Psychology. Now you know the drill, now comes the time to practice. Answer the questions on the screen and check your answers down below. Also, don't forget to check out my ultimate review packet for the unit four review video. When you're done with these questions, make sure you go and check out that video. It covers everything you need to know about unit four. Plus there's a study guide, answer key, practice quiz, and everything else to make sure that you're set for your unit four exam. As always, I'm Mr. Sin. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you next time online.